our next junction, the roof and wall. Another tricky area. And the first issue is the continuity of insulation. Notice that on our detail here, we've got this upstand on our timber truss. It's called a bobtail truss. On a normal build, this rafter would come across at this elevation. And so cutting out this insulation that we've managed to keep in. So for no extra price, um, this 450 high piece allows us to bring our 500 millimeters of mineral wall roof insulation into our 300 millimeter dry therm cavity wall bats, keeping continuity. Therefore, cutting out what in a normal build would be a thermal bridge through the wall plate detail. The second issue is um, minimising thermal bridging. The only thermal bridge in this detail has been minimised by the use of a slender member here. Timber is better than, say, metal. But again, as we've talked about earlier, we, we can't... Um, we can't get away from gravity, so we have to hold the roof up somehow. So we're held here on the outside leaf of stonework uh, for this cantilever, but mainly through this support. Air tightness, again, um, absolutely crucial at this detail because we're going from a masonry construction to a timber construction. You'll always get differential movement in this position. So, as talked about earlier, our wall air tightness is the wet plastering on the block work. On our first floor ceiling, we've used 18mm OSB board, strand board, taped with Tesco number one Pro Climber with a membrane stuck to the OSB board down behind the plaster onto a parging, sand cement parging. We've then put um, expanded galvanised metal keying membrane here for the wet plaster. We've then put in a, a 2 by one battens as a service void for electrical cables and normal plasterboard and skim on top. So actually the air tightness barrier is the OSB board. 18 mil is deemed good enough. We have no penetrations through our first floor ceilings. We were not sure how airtight the house was going to be. Um, so we have no access trap. We've done that through the outside gable in wall. We've no electrical cables. Um, we've used wall lights wherever we can. Um, and we've got no plumbing in the roof whatsoever. We've moved on now to thermal bypass. This is where we're trying to minimise the air movement past our insulation. If we get air movement, wind if you like, blowing through the loft, it uh, what is called wicks the heat from the house through the insulation. It makes any insulation perform um, far less well with this normal air movement that we have in houses. Luckily nowadays we have um, underslating membranes which are airtight but vapour open. So how have we stopped any air movement in the loft? Several measures actually. We've got um, our vapour open underslaters membrane which is laid horizontally across the rafters and then taped with Tescon number one again. Um, we've also taped our lowest membrane layer to this noggin detail here. We have got 9mm birch ply soffit, sloping soffit, which again is screwed and foamed and masticed at that detail. Um, and we've also been very careful 
in how we've dressed the membrane over the eaves. The verge is another version of this here, quite simple, straightforward, but actually you can see that there is no air movement from the eaves and there's none through the underslater's membrane.